In a dark room, anything can happen. Explore the corners of your fantasy, find a stranger, and open up. This is Dark Room Confessions. Today, we're taking a look behind the curtain, and we have lifestyle dom and BDSM educator, Kim Pham. Thanks for being here, <laughs> Thanks Kim. Thanks for having me. Ready to be dommed. <laughs> Licensed therapist and mental health educator, Benjamin Goldman. Hi. We're so glad you're here to center us all <laughs> on this conversation. <laughs> we, 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 we'll see about that. <laughs> and we have stand-up comedian Najee Kamal. Hi, Pran. Nice to see you, Najee. You too. Model, content creator, and activist, Bryce Willard-Smith. Hi. So glad to have you. Glad to be here. Looking great, too. Thanks. I try. And I understand you were recruited directly from a dark room. Is, is that right? I've been, you know... Seen in a few dark rooms. <laughs> you mean aside from this one, this dark room right here. Darker rooms. Uh, darker, room, darker rooms. Right. Of course. Of course. Well, today we're here to talk about relationships, okay? And in recent years, I feel like everyone and their partner are kind of going non-monogamous, if that's not too flat of a thing to say. Mm. It's not just our circle of friends, right? There are some statistics that have shown that like, as much as 42% of partnered gay and bisexual men are now in open relationships, or at least monogamish. <laughs> and, <laughs> man, um, and I'm sure that there's a lot more to be contained within other components of the queer and trans community. Today, we're tackling the renaissance of ethical non-monogamy, if we can even call it that. Whether you're open, mm. poly, swinging, what does it all mean? Generally, a lot of these concepts fall under the term ethical non-monogamy, mm. which a lot would define as the practice of being romantically involved with multiple people who are all aware and agree to this relationship structure. And I guess a good way to, for us to start this conversation, first off, is to talk about maybe where we're at relationship-wise, um, if you're comfortable sharing that, of course. Are you dating or are there specific relationship structures that you adhere to? Uh, I guess like, you know, whatever, however you're entering this conversation, I wanna know. Benjamin, what about you? So as a licensed therapist, I don't necessarily love to talk too much about my personal relationship okay. status. Um, but I will say that I get my intimacy needs and need for love and belonging met by the same person and have been for three years. Love that. Oh my gosh, that's so <laughs> Kim's like, then that's there's so me. precious. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. What about you, Kim? Um, oh, sorry. I'm currently unpartnered. Um, and for the last five years, I've been subscribing to what I call hierarchical consensual non-monogamy. So hierarchical in the sense that I, there's a primary partner, um, which we can dig into that. Mm -hmm. um, and, and consensual non-monogamy. And consensual non-monogamy. I'm trying to just be super intentional about my words, but there's a lot kind of within the community who say that positing non-monogamy as ethical posits that all non-monogamy, therefore, is unethical. Mm. Slay. <laughs> That's so, so good. Yeah, hierarchical, yeah. consensual non-monogamy. Already getting so nuanced <laughs> in here. Um, Bryce, what about you? OK, so I am uh, currently single. Um, but I guess I guess that's not the best way to put it because uh, I am you know, emotionally involved with a couple of people. Um, I just, I guess the way that I go about my relationships is um, just communicating. It's very person specific. Um, I think the type of relationship that I'm capable of having is very dependent on what the other person is willing to do and kind of the compromise that mm. we can make to meet each other's needs. Mm. Um, so yeah, I think single is probably not the best way to put it, but I guess like in technical terms, yes, I am mm. on the market. <laughs> yes. Okay, good to know, good to know. Um, Najee, what about you? So I am also on the market. I'm single, um, dating. <laughs> um, and historically, brace yourself, historically, I do come from a place of monogamy. <gasps> The M word. <laughs> retro. So bleep that if you can. Um, it is retro. Thank you. Um, I uh, I've come a long way in the last five to seven years, though. Uh, now I'm at a place where you know I'm dating multiple people, I'm, and I'm really open to whatever works uh, with the person I'm seeing. Also, that gas was for fun. If you are <laughs> yeah. monogamous, we support we you. Support we love you. you. There's yeah, age, yeah. you know we believe everyone has agency. Is there something? past, present, future that has informed the way you think about relationships, um, whether it's from a specific person in your life who modeled it for you, mm. a historical figure, or an instance that just 
did or did not work for you. Um, I would just love for Ooh. anybody to historical that. figure, my ex boyfriend. <laughs> who, <laughs> wish him well. Um, <laughs> cheated on me, mm. and oh. from that moment, I was like. Oh, I never want to feel this way again. Mm -hmm. Therefore, I'm going to open my mind, be open to openness mm -hmm. in a relationship. When people ask me, oh, you're not monogamous, that must, you know, your parents must have, must have had a rough situation growing up. I'm like, actually, no, my, a lot of my principles and my non-monogamy, I actually learned from my parents. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of um, immigrants or refugees, when they come to the U.S., form marriages or relationships oftentimes out of like utility, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Of like, my parents, Vietnamese refugees in Boston, there probably weren't a ton of folks around, you know, maybe scarcity is something that you're thinking about. And so oftentimes these marriages can be formed from a very kind of perhaps more transactional or functional place. Yeah. Mm. Um, and what they do is then they, I saw growing up in very firsthand experience of like, my parents have so much love for each other, 100%, but they also have so much richness and depth and love and probably ugh, eroticism mm. with other <laughs> kind of connections in their life. And I saw that. and. Growing up again in mononormous society, I was like, oh, it's really weird that my dad has so many girlfriends that he texts or that my mom has like a close, you know, friend of hers that she sees all the time. And was it sexual? I don't know. And to be honest, I don't really care to know. All I know is that their needs were being met both in and out of that relationship. And seeing that kind of healthy sort of communication really absolutely informed how I show up. I think something that's on the tip of our tongues is like this ethical non-monogamy thing has like become a bit of a, a meme in a lot of like gay mm. and queer yeah. circles, right? Mm. And so all of a sudden as a lot of people in certain areas of different queer communities, we have uh, a rise in non-monogamy, whatever form it's taken. Now people that have been monogamous for so long feel like, you know, mm. they're out, right? Like. <laughs> Like they're out of dinosaurs. Yes, like they're dinosaurs, <laughs> yeah. like they're out of trend, which is, you know, not true. Mm -hmm. I also mm -hmm. even think that like we're going back to monogamy at some mm -hmm. point. But I also will say that something that's interesting yeah. to recognize about this is like, yes, ethical non-monogamy as like a concept is like trendy and new, but like, especially look, I mean, looking at Western history, uh, you know, going back to like Greek and Roman Empire, having multiple lovers, having multiple partners, you know, having men who are married to women, having male lovers, like this is not an mm -hmm. unfamiliar or like new concept, um, but we are in an age of a lot more acceptance, I think, with the rise of like conceptions of identity. It's yeah. also largely like a Western concept. I think yeah. they're like, Christianity really spread monogamy as like the root of like our marriage and social structures. Did it? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> right. Can I just say, I am dying to be ethic ethically non-monogamous. I have a performative copy of The Ethical Slut on my nightstand right now. <laughs> <laughs> I have not opened it, and I probably never will, but it's there. Poly, poly Secure is the next one to get. Ooh, yes. If you have two yeah. of okay. them on top oh, of each other, combo. it's going to get them all okay, wet. Send me that later. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to kind of uh, illustrate this spectrum of polyamory and non-monogamy that we're talking about. What terms have you used or previously used to describe some of your relationships? If there's like an example that you can give, whether it's monogamish or mm. talking about your primary partner, um, talking about a polycule is another one we we've talked about. Mm. I just kind of want to throw some terms out to paint a larger picture of what hopefully the viewer can go in. Google and do their due diligence, you know? <laughs> this is me pulling up, pushing up my glasses. That's cute. Um, I low key want to hear your perspective on terms because I feel like you like have yeah. a lot of them. Yeah. So I'm just going to caveat that this is all like a deeply personal choice. Of course, and like yeah. we could go down the rabbit hole of like what's considered fully equitable and, you know, and, and I and I think that, that those conversations are super important and necessary, but this is kind of Kim yes, speaking yes, yes, as yes, Kim. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I subscribe to hierarchical non-monogamy, which means that I am looking for a primary partner where um, our needs together are prioritized perhaps than like my connections and needs with other folks. Mm -hmm. um, I think for a long time, I felt a lot of imposter syndrome around being non-monogamous. I still don't self-identify as capital P poly, and I'm, mm. I'm trying to work through that because I, I, I felt like, you know, when you identify as capital P poly, it's like, I don't know, it's, it feels like this really big thing that I have yet to fully, you know, I don't know if it's fully mine just yet, mm. um, but a lot of folks posit them all as the same. So, you know, a lot of these words like concepts are living and breathing and changing with us. Truly, like in real time. You like literally, this video is literally, even literally really it's, it's gonna change again. <laughs> yeah, but. yeah, and, and I, I, you know, I. I think sometimes when we start to enter into this world, 
we assume that there's like a gold star poly, mm. which is the kitchen table poly. Everybody's equal. Everybody's needs are met. It's constant negotiation. And I, for a long time, posited that as like the ideal. I was like, mm. I need to work to get there. Mm. And then I think I realized through a ton of self-examination, lots of shrooms, <laughs> um, <laughs> lots of tears. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> and I realized like, you know what? These are kind of my own personal needs. And, and, and you could say maybe that's me being weak, me still being kind of one foot in the door in monogamous kind of patriarchal world. But I know. Yeah, that's kind what of, I was going to call you after. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll meet you back after. Um, but I just realized like this is this is as it stands. These are my needs right now. Mm. Hierarchical non-monogamy. And I'm. I'm not gonna feel shame because I'm not this kitchen table poly that mm. I think a lot of folks prescribe as like gold star, like you're the best if you can do that. Kitchen table poly is such a good <laughs> term. I just imagine such a big kitchen it's table It's literally, the, like I have friends who are kitchen table poly and it's yeah. like, we should all be able to hang out. Like everybody's equal. We should all be able to sit. There's no don't yeah, ask, don't yeah, tell yeah, energy. Yeah. And I really respect a lot of the fundamentals behind that sort of polyamory. Mm. I don't know if it's for me in this current season of my life. Mm. Yeah. This is a dark room after all, so I think we're going to get into the sex part of the conversation. Uh, when it comes to polyamory, how do you think communities can benefit from sexually um, in engaging in, I guess, like non-monogamous forms of relationships? I mean, I have, just to kind of like kick things off here, there is no such thing as the one. Right. There is no such thing as the one whole. Oh. There is no such thing as the one Hole. Oh, right? I have two holes, and that matters. No, yes. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, and and I think that like, if you are in a monogamous relationship, just off the bat, like, what the fuck are you doing to get creative about your fucking? Yeah. And I and like seriously, like, this gets so it, boring. Hello. Oh, God. <laughs> Sorry. No. No. Now you can jump Say, in and bring it to more about so, it. Yeah, yeah. Actually, like, yeah. Is there something that you think, as you're kind of, you're in this like, um, you're in this moment where you're like s scooting into polyamory, scooting into like what an open relationship can look like? I'll just say, fraternity X has ruined me <gasps> uh, and associated properties. Um, <laughs> I'll say it's a lot easier to get Eiffel Towered when you are in a polycule. Oh, sure. That's true. Uh, the text thread's already there. Uh, the logistics are smooth. Porn, <laughs> porn as a factor is like so important, right? Mm -hmm. Because like we're so okay with like, oh, let me watch this like nasty piggy scene with like 12 guys, everyone getting come all over their face, right? And then we go home to our partners or some people go home to their partners and they're like no don't spit in my mouth you know and it's just yeah, like right, right, right. We, we we have this double standard around mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. i am so progressive like i believe in you know sex autonomy etc but then when it comes to actually you know the mm -hmm. act of sex we're like so scared of it yes i think monogamy can underline this Madonna horror complex that we have in society that says mm. like our partner needs to be this like perfect beautiful thing we only have this beautiful intimate connection mm -hmm. and then here's all my nasty shit on the side right like mm. and and someone that I would do those things with is not someone I would pursue a serious monogamous relationship with versus polyamory oh, yeah, cracks yeah, 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 yeah. that all open and is mm. like you can form different types of relationships sexual romantic etc in so many different ways as long as there's consent care and communication I think in my experience <clears throat> just maybe, not, from, maybe not you. <laughs> <laughs> well, just from the many threesomes I've had with couples, <laughs> I would say that there's usually one person that's a little hornier than the other. Oh, and yeah. honestly, if you plan to be with someone for a long time, why would you want them to like sacrifice their joy? Mm. Um, some people tend to be a little bit more asexual, like just naturally. And I'm not trying to force you to have more sex. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like you should be free to watch TV and eat snacks <laughs> or whatever it is whatever it is you people do you know? that's my sexual orientation by the yeah. way <laughs> that's right. that's right. and that's why i don't ever do threesomes with couples because I've never unicorn someone I've always wants this more than the other and i don't want to get involved in all that Not I don't want has that has that been like i learned that. has that been like a problem like in the past for you has that been like problem's like, a strong word but i've like noticed tension or someone leaves the room and I can tell there's like something going on between I'm just them. asking if couples are like really into you. <laughs> well, obviously. 
Do you have a woman for you? Like, who's not? I, as a bisexual woman, constantly am bombarded with like unicorn requests, and it, and there is this unicorn what's like a, unique. Yeah, or? what's a unicorn? Request? Oh, so a unicorn is typically like the third brought into a couple, and it's oh, traditionally a bisexual oh. or pansexual woman. Yeah, and there is always like this. You're right, like this inequity, and like someone obviously wants it more, or the worst is like I'm someone's birthday present. Oh. 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 Yeah, literally, literally. And I think in my younger years, I was like, oh, this is fun and interesting. And now I'm like, oh, y'all are not communicating and I'm not going to be the conduit and vehicle for your lack of communication. Okay, so I'm not gonna say that I like being the birthday present, actually. I just don't, I generally don't like being objectified when sex is deeper than that. However, in my experience, if you're talking about a couple that's been together for not that long, or you're talking about a couple who's been together for a long time based on some other premise that doesn't involve communication, yes. They'll do the birthday present thing, they'll do this weird thing, and then one of the partners will pull you to the side and be like, let's get a hotel when she's not around. Like, <laughs> some BS like that, you know what I'm saying? Like that happens. But I've had some amazing experiences with like two hot dads, or one of the dads is like, you know what, I'm not as into you as my partner, I get it, but he's also not leaving me for you. Like, let's be honest. Mm -hmm. so also being have a, cuck a great is, time. Cucking is hot. It like, is obviously. Cucking is hot when it's real communication. Like, yes. if we have something real here, yeah. neither of you have anything to worry about, and I'm respectful. Like, yeah. I, hope you, I hope you got that from me. I'm gonna yeah. respect what's going on there. So yeah. it's- Yeah, no, I 100% hear you. I think situation. most of my negative unicorn experiences have largely been with straight couples who haven't had that sort of communication. Right. They're just like, oh, well, my boyfriend's been wanting this and I feel bad and so let me <laughs> in indulge, right? And mm -hmm. and as a third person coming into that, I'm like, that's there's some shit in the room yeah. that like I don't, not I'm sure. not ready to like help them work through. Mm -hmm. The yeah. heterosexuals are yeah. in crisis. Less they really <laughs> are <laughs> constantly, <laughs> constantly <laughs> really, in really need of support. <laughs> there's a number um, at the bottom of the screen of to yes. tell. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Psychotherapist Esther Perel says, monogamy used to mean one person for life. Now, monogamy means one person at a time. Our partners do not belong to us. They are only on loan, she says, with an option to renew or not. So open relationships can be great. Polyamory can be great. There's also this whole other side of the thing wherein it also complexifies how we think about relationships, how we think about um, engaging with a person. I also think, to be honest, a lot of people that try to practice non-monogamy of some kind don't actually know what they're doing. You mm. know what I mean? We've all been there. Yes, literally, <laughs> myself included. Yeah. And I feel like- What um, do I do with you? Two cocks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. I think we figured my, that part out. My, <laughs> I'll my show point you later. Is, <laughs> my point is um, jealousy, judgment, totally. insecurity, those are the things that beget from that, right? Mm. So I guess my first question for when this stuff crops up is, how do you see jealousy manifesting in, in some of these relationships and can it ever be a good thing? Still yeah, I mean, I, I, I have a couple of thoughts on this. The first thing I'll say is like, we can absolutely fetishize anything. And so, <laughs> yes. and so fetishizing jealousy, number one, is hot. hot. Yes. Um, yes. And, num and number two, like, Aside from just like fetishizing jealousy, we were kind of talking about this earlier. Like when we're talking about play sex versus intimate sex, and just to be clear, right now we're talking about play sex, right? Um, it is okay for us to take our real human experiences with consent, right, and with respect and play with it, right? That's like what sex is really all about, right? Like we have this idea of a big, strong man, and I need a woman, right? Or like a big, strong man, and another big, strong man trying to. Dominate the big strong man. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe those are the only maybe it's two. Right? Maybe it's the yeah. I'm watching. <laughs> a big strong they them. Dominate the other big strong they <laughs> them. Um, and 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 I think that jealousy is a lack of communication, obviously, and a lack of creativity. Yeah. Right? Because you aren't putting in the work in whatever form of a relationship that you have to say, hey, this need isn't being met. I don't need it immediately right now but like let's play and there's different kinds of jealousy too there's yeah. like sexual jealousy mm -hmm. then there's like intimacy jealousy yeah. which sexual jealousy mm -hmm. i mean that's sort of where you're treating people i mean i love esther perel but yeah. even her quote sort of implies that it's like a business contract that you yeah. own a piece of the person and really i think it should be less like a contract, more like a Moroccan bazaar where there's give and take, you know, bartering. 
<laughs> but um, I think my big fear with jealousy, and thank you for saying it's healthy to feel jealous, because I do feel jealous of intimacy. My fear is what if this person falls in love with this other person? Mm -hmm. I'm confident sexually. I say, get yours, I'll get mine. Talk about it or don't. That's, mm. you know, based on the parameters of our relationship, whatever we decided. But, but isn't it the, the idea of that too is kind of like, once again, this like idea of safety, it's like, even if you're in the most monogamous, you live in a box with someone, like the person can still fall in love with someone else. And yeah. that's and that's like kind of the other side of jealousy too, is that it is mm. a hot emotion that is abs absolutely can be based in like facts, but also can be based in a narrative that you've created from yeah. your past. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and to that effect, honestly, I don't know if this is like the same as like what you're talking about, but like I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be way more jealous if I find out someone's been texting you know somebody for like mm -hmm. three weeks or whatever and a lot less mad if you like suck their dick at a party you know what i mean totally, like i know totally. i'm not the average person but like in that kind of intimacy i think is a completely different ball yeah. game so as we navigate this you know boundaries are important okay just mm. another favorite buzzword that we like that like you know still has meaning and import yeah. um i'm curious what kind of boundaries or rules or um you know, agreements do y'all have with your various partners? We mentioned don't ask, don't tell earlier. I think that that one comes up a lot. Is there anything that comes to mind? I am a huge advocate personally, depends on what works for you, of don't ask, don't tell. Rest in peace, Bill Clinton. I know he's looking up at us and smiling. <laughs> um, I, uh, I don't want to hear about it. I want you to have your fun. I prefer if we don't bring it up. Um, I was awesome. dating someone who... You know, I was on his close friends and, you know, we were dating three, four months and I was, you know, sort of seeing him talk about how much dick he's getting. And I was like, oh, I'm going to mute that. Like, I just yeah. didn't want to have to engage on that level with him, you know. I think there's a point in the relationship when it's like, OK, let's turn the dial up. I want to hear this. Um, when I first start seeing someone and hanging out with someone, What's the point in us like engaging in anything outside of us when we're together? Let's just focus on the chemistry that we have and let this grow. But when I get to a place where you've been seeing someone for like two or three months and it's very consistent and we're talking about everything else, mm -hmm. now it just feels like you're like hiding something. I don't want my delicate sensibilities to stop us from going deeper with each other. <laughs> like, please, 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 please take me there. And I want to take you there. Oh. Frankly, it's yeah. kinky for me. I'm, I'm the type of person, the I don't know about y'all, yeah. but I'm the type of, yes, compersion, exactly. I'm the type of person that likes to hear my partner ha who's growing into their kinkiness as they find security with me, walk right. out of the dark room and be like, I just stuck three dicks. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. ooh, do you, Wait, have, do you com got pics? Compersion, like, we have a term. <laughs> compersion. Yes. So yes. contextualize it. It's when you find joy when your partner finds joy, even if it's external of you. Ooh. Mm. Some often, people often put the, uh, the foil of like jealousy versus compersion. Is yeah. it, is it, is it like, is it the same thing as like, like cucking or in the, in the voyeurism umbrella or something? Um, I think folks can find compersion within cucking, but I, I think compersion is like the umbrella oh, term okay. of like, I don't know, in the poly community folks like strive for compersion of like, oh, nice. Okay. I, if I can, if I'm able to work through my jealousy and I'm able to find joy when my partners comes home and tells me about this like raunchy little orgy they had. And like, I would say that like, cucking also is like a kind of a role playing jealousy under the term. Of oh, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. It's we like can actually fetish, I'm actually jealousy. experiencing yes. compersion, but like it's turning us on for some reason to fetishize the jealousy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. We love using I, eroticism to work through things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Boundaries are living, breathing things. That doesn't give mm -hmm. us the right to like, consistently violate them with our partners, but I do think it's an open dialogue. It's never gonna be a final destination. Like actually for me with one of my boundaries is like, I'm down to hear about it. If we communicate in advance, you have to ask me like, Kim, are you in a headspace to hear about my date tonight? Right. Yes, no, yeah. do I opt in or not? Easy. And then one of my kind of like physical boundaries is like, I'm down for you to have like, have fun. Obviously we'll, we'll talk about sexual wellness and sexual safety, um, but something that I have is like, I personally don't love one of my boundaries is I don't love for my partners, especially if we have a BDSM dynamic, to engage in that same BDSM dynamic with someone else. That's mm. a, pers a total personal preference. That's and a great to some example. People might, that, yeah. that might be like seem really rational. I'm like, go have all the vanilla sex you want. Missionary yes. all day. Love all that day. for you. Yeah. Um, but are but you don't call engage? somebody like sir. I'm please. mommy. <laughs> I'm, I'm mommy. mommy. I'm like, no one else is mommy. I'm not going to mommy. There's one child. There's in this one. Yeah. I do think it's tricky. I'm going to say like, I, I, I don't yuck anybody's yums. 
but I have my own personal fears when it comes to that, just because I feel like, and like I said, in the beginning, it's totally different. But if we're starting to build this thing, we're like three, four, five, six months in, it's okay for you to have your own thing. You know what I'm saying? I'm not asking you to tell me every detail, but right. like you might, I might want to know just, yes, this person is kind of special. It's like, right, I, right, the right, term right, I right. use is like a micro boyfriend. Some people say lover. Do you say micro boyfriend? Yeah. <laughs> you definitely don't say that if they're really Four terms. <laughs> I agree. When it comes to micro boyfriends, I would like to be looped in. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, what about with, nano boyfriends? <laughs> nano boyfriends similarly <laughs> tell me no, thing or what two. What about macro boyfriends? <laughs> I didn't yeah. mean to cut you That's off. That's a problem. <laughs> no, I mean, I think when it comes to micro boyfriends, I definitely want to be looped in. When it comes to slutty play, go nuts. Right. You know, I might, if I see you in the dark room, I might adjust my gaze to maybe not stare at you, but um, it's the, the micro penis, micro boyfriend. So, <laughs> um, sorry, my terms. Um, that's where I would prefer a heads up. Does the micro boyfriend know they're being called a micro yeah. boyfriend? Yeah. Not necessarily. That's also I, a key oh, thing for me. They might like it. That's it. They might. <laughs> they might be into it. <laughs> they might like to know that, that where they stand. That's another thing communicating wise too is like, A, the micro boyfriend better respects me. Yeah. That's where that line is. Like, I don't need much more out of this. I probably mm. want to meet them once or twice just to know they respect what we have and that they're not trying to encroach upon that. Totally. And once I'm on that level, I can see them out and be like, what's up? You're yeah. bringing joy to the to my person. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I love that. Yeah. Let's picture this, though. You are single. Some of you are not single. but so, so imagine that you're single. You're ready to mingle. You've been chatting with someone you're ready to meet up with. And all of a sudden, they kind of disclose that they're in an open relationship. I kind of want to start with the single people and ask, um, where do you go from there, right? Mm. Do you have a boundary that you communicate? Do you feel it out? Like, how do you kind of start to navigate? Well, from that point on, it's a sex thing. It's no longer a romantic thing for me. Mm. I'm, I'm, you're lucky these days if people even disclose it at all. Yeah. Mm. I went on multiple dates with someone this past summer who things were going great, sex was good, there was a vibe. I found out from another person that they've had a partner for like the past six years. It didn't I've come up. I've heard this story so many times. Yeah, and it's so like, so wild. and he texts me, he's like, when are we gonna hang out? I'm like, we're not gonna hang out. Like, this could have been cool if you had just told, told me that yeah. like day one. Yeah. I feel like that's something specific to gay male hookup culture and, and like where we meet too. Like, like get I think off it's something hinge. that- Hinge is not for that. <laughs> <laughs> Sniffies is no. though. Sniffies. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Shouldn't name brands. <laughs> Very true. Like if you have a long term partner, don't take me out to dinner. You know what I mean? Take I just want to like, dinner whenever. Within, unless it's within like their <laughs> communication, right? Like right. is that if a personal preference it. you're saying? If they communicate it, mm. great. Free Anything. dinner is free dinner though. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's you're what I'm not saying. Wrong. I didn't say it was free. <laughs> yeah. We've kind of established that as queer communities polyamory or ethical non-monogamy, consensual non-monogamy, whatever we want to kind of pull it into this bucket, it is becoming increasingly popular. Mm -hmm. I also think, if it's not too bold to say, that monogamy is also, you know, coming back, right? There's always a counterculture. These things always cycle. What does the future of queer relationships look like to y'all? I'm curious, like, do you think open relationships are, like, mainstream at this point? I'm not seeing any monogamy. I don't know what we're talking about. I've not, <laughs> I've not encountered a queer monogamous, I should clarify, a gay male, cis male monogamous relationship in years. Yeah. I don't know about you, but I haven't seen it. I also think the conversation we're having is like maybe specific to our place in a me yeah. metropolis, right? Yeah, like totally. this is different across the country. Right. I also kind of feel maybe not just like in terms of sentiment, but like culturally, like in terms of like the stories and films and TV shows we consume, like, it's all monogamy. Like, we're, ne like, we're, we're never mm. gonna, we don't have, like, a poly Disney princess. Like, and we deserve <laughs> it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. That would the be The dwarves incredible. weren't in a poly group? Ah! Yeah! <laughs> oh, God. Can you imagine? Actually, yeah! <laughs> we should just be rewriting all the old stories and just making them all polycules. Like, right. Belle was in a polycule, so like, Cinderella. Poly the three, the three, the three fairies. Devastated. Listen, oh, those, definitely a those seven oh, dwarves, honey. 100%. 100%. Those seven dwarves yeah. were all imagine that train. in their <laughs> non-monogamous <laughs> track oh, um, I feel like what we've kind of said is that queer people are maybe more likely to seek um, these new relationship structures, new quote unquote um, mm. relationship structures. 
And I feel like a lot of this comes back to like who we are as a community. Why do you think we're so drawn to ethical non-monogamy, consensual non-monogamy? What I think about this kind of queer generation has done is that I think we've really examined how so many institutions in our lives are failing us, yeah. like you said. And so why would we, why not question this other institution of like very heteronormative monogamy? Like why wouldn't that be kind of the next thing for us to really examine and question? Is that fully ours or was that given to us or inherited to, inherited by us, you know, from society? And so it's just like a, I, I, I really welcome it. You know, I don't, my goal, I think, I think our goal here isn't to make everyone non-monogamous. No, I think no, yeah. the goal is to have folks just question like, is this really yours? I think we know what it's like to not be liberated. I think that we know uh, from a community standpoint what it feels like to not be free to experience our joy the way uh, we need to. Um, and I think that as a response, we um, are more likely to uh, seek relationships that um, are just more curious. Like we just have more questions, I think, you know? Also just like really simply, it's efficient. 50% of marriages end in divorce, yeah. right? right? So like, who the fuck are you kidding? Like if, 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 if you're gonna like subscribe to this like monolith of a relationship structure, it's much more efficient to say like, let's play in the sandbox. Let's play in 50 different options of sandboxes and see what works for us. And it's a great way to meet people. Oh my God. <laughs> it is a great way to make friends. It it's really true. is. It's true. All my best friends are exes of yeah. one yeah. Or like people that we frequented <laughs> with in yeah. dark yeah. rooms. Oh, um, and I wanted to say that I don't think that this is just a queer people thing yeah. either. No, no. Um, oh, no. I, I think when you live in the shadows or have been marginalized in some way, like you're just more likely to question the institutions that we've been given and, and figure out if it's yours or not. I mean, unless like some people lean into fear and become more likely to like do the whole monogamy thing, um, but some people not so. And I think it's like generational too. I would say like my little brother um, was discussing with me how he is like, doesn't mind if his girl does her thing, you know? Yeah. And I'm just okay. like, I'm no, no, like, like oh, no, I don't need to know any more about that. <laughs> no, hetero heterosexuals have caught on to also. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They, they, ha they so have, they have. So like, it's over, it's, basically. Yeah, basically, the yeah, fun is so over. It's so all back to being That's why we're all gonna be <laughs> monogamous again. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. The homosexualization of America is the it's happening. Even the straights are gay. It really comes full circle. It really does. Is there something that you think non-monogamous couples can learn from monogamous couples or vice versa? Definitely. Can you just replay this whole fucking video? Because, like, <laughs> yeah. like, it's, I, I, I like, seriously, like talking to you guys, like what's come to mind for me is just like, this is everything we've been talking about is the root of like what monogamous and non-monogamous people can learn from each other. Because when we pretend like a relationship is just a box and isn't something that isn't an exchange of information, mm -hmm. not just within the couple, but within the couple in the context mm -hmm. of their society or community. Like that's really how we have fulfilling relationships. I think something that's been really helpful for me on my own journey is not viewing monogamy from a place of scarcity or not viewing non-monogamy from a place of scarcity. I think yeah. so. sometimes we say like, oh, I'm not enough. And that's why my partner needs to go find other things mm. outside of me when we reframe away from enoughness and posit yeah. more towards alignment, mm. infinitely like you start to open up possibilities of, oh, of course I, someone's not gonna be everything for me. And instead of me being like, oh, I'm not enough. It's like, oh, we are maybe our needs and our desires are not aligned in this way in this season of our life. What can we do creatively to build connection with other folks or other whatever to bring kind of full round joy to ourselves, like full spectrum of joy, I guess. We all just wanna be loved fundamentally, right? We want, to, we want acceptance. We wanna feel like we have a place, a role in this world. I think having multiple, multiple partners gives us multiple chances at feelings of acceptance. And so maybe sometimes people are going after that as well. We all want to be loved or stepped on by mommy. Right. <laughs> Get in line. Of the Which can be loved. It all comes back <laughs> to mommy. <laughs> <laughs> so from the bottom of my heart, I have to say, I really have truly learned so much from all y'all's perspectives as someone who came into this conversation very fresh. Um, so thank you for your crazy wisdom and also your sluttiness, which is always appreciated. <laughs> this has been Darkroom Confessions. Until next time, stay curious. Thank you.